Welcome to our presentation about the unknown connection between EMF and water. Everything is EMF. The 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G generations of transmitters, mobile phone, Wi-Fi, microwave ovens and cosmic radiation. The universe has emitted EMF radiation since its inception. All planets and stars in the universe have their own EMF radiation that causes the electromagnetic fields that come towards us from space. Partly due to this natural radiation, we have been able to develop from single-celled organisms to modern humans. Here we see an example of our solar system with a number of planets and each planet emits its own typical frequency. Frequency patterns are different because every planet has a different chemical composition, so all activity results in different radiation and also a different wavelength. In addition to all planets, the Sun and all other stars have their own frequency. NASA has managed to reduce these frequencies to an audible level for us. Here we see our atmosphere. From space all kinds of radiation is coming at us. High frequency radiation, gamma radiation, x-rays, but also visible light, infrared and radio waves. We call this cosmic radiation. If you look at the picture you will see that in the grey area that the part of this cosmic radiation is shielded by our atmosphere, specifically the ionosphere and the magnetosphere. Together they ensure that not all this radiation reaches us. Fortunately, not all radiation is absorbed, including the radio waves, visible light and infrared light. Without it, the sun's heat would not be able to penetrate to Earth. This has ensured that life has arisen on Earth. Here we see that the majority of the artificial radiation uses the area where the radiation is not absorbed. Here is a large part of our radio transmitters 3G, 4G and 5G networks, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. These transmission methods are, from a technically necessary point of view, placed in these non-absorbent areas, but they are also in an unhealthy area for our bodies. Here we will zoom in further on our channels. The different names for the mobile networks 3G, 4G and 5G, contrary to what many people think, do not describe the amount of gigahertz but the generation of mobile networks. If we look at these generations of mobile networks, we see that the different frequencies are used for each generation. What is striking about the 5G network is that it uses the 26 gigahertz frequency that falls in the part that is absorbed by the atmosphere. But the range of these channels also interferes with trees, buildings and other objects, which means that so many transmitters have to be placed. This also means that the transmitters must be more powerful to compensate for absorption and interference. EMF has an electric and a magnetic component. Here we see an electric wave. This electric wave is generated when electrons move. The electric wave creates a magnetic wave perpendicular onto the electric wave. Conversely, a magnetic wave can also generate an electric wave. 
This is reflected in the operation of a dynamo that generates electricity through the movement of magnets. Here we see a so-called carrier wave in red. This is a constant frequency over which another frequency can transport the information. This is how sound is transported over radio waves. There are two methods, AM, which stands for amplitude modulation, the green wave, and FM, frequency modulation, the purple wave. You need a carrier or a carrier wave to get a signal at a receiver. Is EMF harmful? The thermic and non-thermic effects. Virtually all studies cited by telecom companies and government looking at whether EMF is harmful or not almost exclusively investigate the thermal effects of the EMF. The ICNERP, International Commission of Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, has drawn up standards for this. For the inner body temperature, the standard is based on the natural fluctuation in body temperature. The standard for type 1 tissue, which includes the limbs, has been set at an increase of maximum of 5 degrees Celsius. In type 2 tissue, which includes the head and abdomen, the natural temperature is somewhat higher and the standard has therefore been set at an increase of a maximum of 2 degrees Celsius. In determining these standards, only the thermal effects of EMF radiation are considered, and other negative effects of this radiation are ignored. There is enough evidence to substantiate that EMF does have harmful effects due to non-thermal effects. These non-thermal effects can be divided into two categories, the neurological disorders and physical disorders. Neurological disorders include stress, depressive symptoms and headache. The physical disorders that are associated with EMF radiation include a decrease in sperm quality and damage to cells and DNA. These effects have been established by, among others, studies by Professor Martin L. Paul. It has been established by various researchers that EMF radiation causes non-thermal harmful effects. Among other things, Professor Paul has conducted literature research in which 23 scientific studies have been compared. One of the findings of these studies relates to the transport systems of calcium in the cells. These transport systems in the cells are sensitive to magnetic fields. If the amount of radiation is too high, too much calcium is transported into the cells. This with serious consequences such as DNA damage. Paul's research has established that EMF is partly responsible for an increased uptake of calcium in cells the so-called calcium influx. People who are sensitive to radiation and therefore have developed tinnitus can be treated with calcium blockers. These are drugs that were initially developed against cardiac arrhythmias. The symptoms of tinnitus disappear as a result, which is an indication of the increased calcium influx under the influence of EMF. There are now more than 200 scientists from more than 40 different countries who have expressed concerns about the effects of EMF radiation and in particular the use of 5G transmitters. All of these scientists acknowledge that there are actual harmful effects caused by this EMF radiation. More than 200 experiments, mainly conducted with cancer cells and tested with more than 300 different frequencies, have shown that there are harmonic, shown here in green, and disharmonic frequencies in red. Harmonic means that it is supportive and disharmonic that there is a disruptive effect.
frequencies can therefore be subdivided into harmful or harmless frequencies. This is also called harmonic, shown as green bars, or disharmonic, shown as red bars. Water has special properties. Looking at a water molecule, we see that it consists of one oxygen atom that is negatively charged and two hydrogen atoms that are positively charged. Together these atoms provide a neutral water molecule. Due to the positioning of the oxygen atom on one side of the hydrogen atoms, the water molecule has a polarized property. The molecule therefore acts as a kind of a magnet. The oxygen atom is the negative pole and the hydrogen atom the positive pole. Water can build structures due to this polarized property. The most stable and important structure that it can build is the hexagonal structure that resembles a honeycomb in a bee's nest. This structure is the most stable form in which water wants to organize itself because it is the most energy efficient structure to maintain. In summary, there are supportive harmonic frequencies and unsupportive disharmonic frequencies. The harmonic frequencies help build and maintain the natural hexagonal structure of water and the disharmonic frequencies disturb and break down the structure. This happens especially when the disharmonic frequencies are stronger and more present than the harmonic. Water molecules are in fact small magnets with a north and south pole. This is called a dipole molecule. This polarization makes water very sensitive to EMF radiation and this animation shows how water reacts to this. Molecules do not consist of tight fixed connections between the atoms but are mobile and flexible. These movements can be either symmetrical or asymmetrical. Rotating movements between the different atoms are also possible. These movements are in fact vibrations within the molecule. These vibrations can be generated and amplified by EMF. When these vibrations become too strong, this can lead to breaking of the bonds. These vibrations are also cause a tension field, which improves the insulating effect of the water. Every molecular structure, cell and tissue has a so-called eigenresonance. This is a frequency at which the structure or tissue resonates. Any part that cannot vibrate with this resonance is removed from that system. Water has a liquid ice structure. When structured water freezes, it will crystallize in the form of a six angular crystal structure. This is a natural, healthy form of crystal formation in water when it freezes. With natural, healthy water, where good hexagonal ice structures are formed, the color of the ice turns blue. This is because all the light is absorbed except blue. It can therefore be recognized, among other things, when water has a healthy hexagonal structure. The phenomenon of a prism in which white light is refracted in the colors of the rainbow is well known. What happens in the prism is that light is refracted depending on the wavelength of the colors that make it up. This happens because the light moves through a different medium and each color has a different refractive index. A crystal is simply a structure where positive and negative poles are attracted to each other and take on a fixed form. Due to this property, crystals can take various forms. A cube form of table salt is given here as an example. Typically, rainbow colors are generated by birefringent crystals such as quartz, 
with ordered arrangement of atoms. In this example we see a fruit fly larva under a microscope. Under a normal microscope this animal is transparent and we see nothing special. Birefringent crystals split plain polarized white light into two orthogonally oriented rays. In a polarization microscope the two rays interfere and that's how the rainbow colors are generated. It is actually the water that makes the entire organism liquid crystalline. Because the water is liquid crystalline and the crystalline structure is responsible for the rainbow colors. Here we see several transparent animals including water fleas and other insect larvae. As can be seen the different body parts color by hexagonal water structures under a polarization microscope. This indicates that these water structures are ubiquitous in nature. To see the rainbow colors in the living organism, the liquid crystalline molecules not only have to be fully aligned, but also moving coherently, macromolecules and water molecules together. In summary, it can be concluded that water in our body does not naturally consist of loose, unstructured water molecules, but that in a healthy state it mainly occurs in hexagonal structured forms. The water's edge has special properties, the exclusion zone. Most people don't wonder how clouds actually arise. Clouds arise because there are forces in the clouds through which water molecules are attracted to each other and start to organize. This then forms clusters that together form a cloud. Pollock calls this state the fourth phase of water. In this the amount of vibration is just high enough to be almost like gas but low enough to still be able to cluster and be attracted to each other so that clouds can form. Water droplets form through the hydrogen bridges between the different water molecules. This mutual attraction ensures the clustering of water in a drop. Here we see an example of how drops can move across the surface of water. Thanks to the strong structured bonds they can float on the surface for a while. Here we see an example of how strong the bonding of water due to the surface tension can be. This strong bond and the speed at which the lizard moves itself allows it to move over water. Without any connecting structure of the water molecules this phenomenon would be impossible. In addition to the so-called surface tension, water can even form bridges over a distance of up to 4 cm. This can be caused by sending an electric charge through the water, which structures the water molecules. Hexagonally structured water molecules can form different layers of hexagonal structured water by means of hydrogen bonds. A mutual shift ensures cohesion of the various layers of hexagonal water structure. Here we see a number of these hexagonal water structures stacked on top of each other. Stable water clusters up to millimeters in dimensions can be seen under an atomic force microscope. Hexagonally structured water has a negative charge. This resonating structure ensures that all substances that do not resonate harmoniously with this structure are being repelled. Edel Giudice has found that the hexagonal structures vibrate and resonate with each other. This resonance causes electrons to be moved and exchanged within the structure. This makes this network not only a receiver of EMF radiation, but also a transmitter of EMF radiation.
Here we see an example of how a hydrophilic surface expels the particles through resonance of a hexagonal water which is also called exclusion zone. This is called exclusion zone because it excludes all non-resonating particles. E. del Giudice states, It is known that coherent water expels all the molecules and other particles unable to resonate with it. Rowland states that interactions between red blood cells is caused by coherent excitations in cells. The attraction in red blood cells, among others, is caused by very specific EMF frequencies. When the water structure is no longer healthy due to EMF radiation, we see that the red blood cells stick together. We call this the money roll formation. There are capillaries everywhere in our body. The inner walls of these capillaries have the property that cause a repulsive charged field. This charge ensures that the red blood cells do not touch and slow down against the wall of the capillaries. The red blood cells are also wider than the capillaries themselves and therefore need this repelling to flow through them. When this charge is disrupted, blood flow slows down, which can cause thrombosis. Because of these structured bonds, there is a network in our body through which all tissues and cells are connected and able to communicate. Coherent water connects and protects.